So currently spills into the river happen about 60 times a year. That's what we're here to stop. So I'm here in Fulham in London by the River Thames and I'm standing next to one of the access shafts for London's new super sewer. Now this sewer is designed to stop sewage from flowing from the old Victorian sewer into the Thames as it does 50 or 60 times a year. Most of the tunnelling is now done. We're going to go down into the super sewer itself, which is not operational yet. My first foray under the Thames, I think, apart from the Blackwall Tunnel. So we're stood in this huge grey concrete tunnel. Where exactly are we and what is this for? So we're in Hammersmith and Fulham. Uh, we're almost under the river at this point. Uh, and this is the super sewer. What we've been doing for the last eight years is building all of this, building the interception points up and down the river such that currently the sewer spills that go into the river we capture. We send via some other tunnels uh, and the shafts. Uh, send it down here, this is the main tunnel. It's falling that way, it's heading east, and there's another 15 out of, out of the total of 25 kilometers in that direction, and we get to Beckton Sewage Treatment Works, which will then treat the sewage, that, the raw sewage that currently spills into the river. And if we were stood here in a year or so's time when this is fully operational, what will be happening, what will we see? We could be experiencing anything from total dryness, to maybe small flows, but we could also be seeing flows that go right up, to, so the pipe is full, right up to the roof above us and the whole uh, body of water moving. And sometimes it acts as a, a storage tank. Yeah. If it's raining really heavily in London, then Beckton Sewage Treatment Works uh, will, will struggle to keep up with what's coming to it anyway, let alone all of the things that we're capturing. So we have to hold it here. So it's a, it's a large diameter, total 1.6 million cubic meters, but it, yeah, it's, a, it's a storage tank as well as a pipe. And how do you build a tunnel like this? Carefully. <laughs> <laughs> it, they, they've, they've all been built with, uh, with tunnel boring machines, which are fairly well established technology. Clearly the likes of Basil Jett and Brunel didn't have those kind of things, which is why we can go a lot deeper. And at the same time it's doing that, it's building the, the, the tunnel behind it. It's a 15 million pound underground factory, uh, these tunneling machines. But this needs to be a waterproof, watertight tunnel. So we then put a secondary lining of concrete in there as well to keep the aquifer out of the tunnel and to keep the sewage out of the aquifer. But also as an extra wearing course, because this is gonna be here for uh, design life for 120 years, probably operational for two, 300 years. We've got a kink in the tunnel here, which I think was not planned. That's, that's correct. This, we're standing in what should have been a straight piece of tunnel, but the tunneling machine that came from that direction going here towards the shaft, as it was approaching, the timing just didn't work because there were tunneling works going on in the shaft, so we couldn't get it out. So we turned right and we parked it just behind that curve. So there's a, it's a shell of a tunneling machine, all the all the oil and the grease and everything's been taken out, all of the, the valuable parts, the motors and the rams, they've all been taken out. So it's a, a skeleton of a, a tunneling machine. We've grouted it all up to keep it safe uh, and it's parked just behind that corner. And it'll stay there forever? It's there forever. It's a time capsule for someone else, I guess. In about a year's time, this will be capped. The whole thing will be sealed off and no human being will go down there again until some future civilization excavates the ruins of London in 3000 AD or so.